who had reportedly been taken hostage was rescued by the police during an operation in Kingston today. Marlon Jones had been reported missing on Thursday. The JCF said following the receipt of credible intelligence from multiple sources to include tips from the public, a joint team led by the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Branch, CTOC, in collaboration with the Joint Antigan Task Force, conducted targeted operations across multiple police divisions. Police said multiple arrests have been made and more will follow as investigations are ongoing to identify and arrest all persons involved. The JCF said no effort will be spared to ensure evidence is presented to secure convictions for all gangsters responsible. It said the training and resoluteness of the security forces played an essential role in the operation as much as the assistance received from the public. Citizens are being encouraged to continue sharing information with the police. And the police are again urging citizens to be vigilant as they go about their activities, especially during this back-to-school period. Head of the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch, Assistant Commissioner of Police Gary McKenzie, has assured that officers stand ready to serve and protect. This as the Jamaica Constabulary Force ramps up deployment to ensure smooth commute and safety for everyone. 100 participants are set to commence training in coding under the 2023 Universal Service Fund Technology Advancement Program TAP3 Residential Code course. The opening ceremony for TAP3 was held on Friday at the Stonehill Heart Academy in Kingston. TAP is a comprehensive training program that provides participants with the technical, creative, and business skills required to succeed in the rapidly evolving technology landscape. 300 trainees in total are being targeted with a hundred of them in the residential program and the remaining 200 will commute to various training centers across the island. All trainees will receive a stipend of $10,600 per week, of which $2,000 will be deducted as compulsory savings. The accumulated savings will become available to the trainee upon completion of the program. Speaking at this ceremony, Education Minister Favel Williams said coding is not merely a technical skill, but a pathway to future innovation. This event represents a significant milestone in our continuing commitment to foster technological advancement in Jamaica as we extend our efforts to empower the next generation of innovators. In the context of today's data-driven world where algorithms power significant transformations, coding is not merely a technical skill, it's a pathway to future innovation and a substantial stride towards realizing Vision 2030. As the world undergoes revolutionary changes, the upcoming cohort of coders projected to graduate next year will collaboratively enhance systems such as healthcare system. You will redefine agricultural practices. You will elevate the entertainment industry and much more. Education Minister Favel Williams. Every effort is being made to sell assets and recover receivables to refund affected clients of fraud hit stocks and securities limited SSL. The monies would also be used to cover expenses incurred over the course of the fraud investigation. Speaking last evening during a Twitter Spaces forum, Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark noted that the temporary manager has been tasked with using all legal means to pursue monetization of SSL's assets. Dr. Clark said, only a court order can declare the money irrecoverable. The FSC and the temporary manager using all legal means available to pursue the monetization of any asset on the balance sheet of SSL, inclusive of any accounts receivables. It will not be sufficient. The government will not accept a simple statement 
that accounts receivable balances are uncollectible. Under these circumstances of the government providing support, the government of Jamaica and the people of Jamaica will accept nothing less than a court order, either in Jamaica or in whichever territory is the registered territory of any legal entity that owes money to SSL. Only a court in that jurisdiction pronouncing that entity as insolvent will suffice for us to conclude that those amounts are irrecoverable. The minister, however, pointed out that it's not yet known if, during formal bankruptcy proceedings, if repaying the government would be a priority. The government, through the Financial Services Commission, has taken over the management of SSL, and with SSL strapped for money, part of the expenses to be incurred by the government is payment of staff salaries and legal fees. Any and all assets on the balance sheet, apart, of course, from furniture and computers and intangibles like a computer system and things that are necessary for the ongoing responsibilities of SSL, that the temporary manager ought to seek a monetization of those assets. If that is successful and can yield funds, then those funds would become available for SSL to meet its creditor liabilities. Now, SSL is not in a formal bankruptcy proceedings. I don't want to sort of go ahead, but one can't assume that the first use of funds that SSL comes into would be to repay the government. The schedule and the priority of liabilities, I don't want to pronounce on that. Dr. Clark cautioned that it's possible that nothing could turn up even after the pursuit of assets. This is a, a complex legal situation. The next stage, you know, would be obviously an insolvency proceedings for this entity. And in insolvency proceedings, the priority of liabilities, you know, that's a dense legal matter. And I wouldn't want to pronounce on where the government would fall in that schedule. I would just want to add the caveat that any monetization of any of those assets you know, is a long-term undertaking. You know, if you're going to pursue courts in Jamaica, pursue courts abroad and so on. But we have a short-term funding issue, and that's why we have to step in. Now, it is entirely possible that even after the aggressive pursuit of those assets, that nothing turns up. But we have to be satisfied that the temporary manager aggressively goes after any assets on the balance sheet of SSL. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark.